Now I'd like to welcome a guest back to the studio. She was with us once before. We're pleased to have her back. Beert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, welcome back to our show. In this short uh, routine inquiry, I'd like to go right back to the beginning and ask, when you were growing up in Iceland, what sort of thing did you listen to? What were you listening to on the radio and that? It was, I, I think I was probably spoiled rotten because I could hear uh, uh, jazz music from my grandparents and all the happy music and then I could hear um, classical music in my school. Where did you hear the happy music? My parents. Oh, right. Yeah. And then I could hear... Um, what would you call happy music? Oh, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, yeah. Cream, all that stuff. Mm. Yeah. And then... Uh, then I was just fascinated, radio, just, just temporary stuff, you know? Yeah. Is it true that you made your first album at the age of 11? Yeah. It's very young to make a record, isn't it? What sort of record was that? It was a collection of songs by Icelandic uh, songwriters. It was like a pop, pop album, I guess. And was it a success at that age? Yeah, it made that. It was a gold record in Iceland. So you were a child star in Iceland, you see? I never realised that. Yeah. Pretty exciting. <laughs> now you were uh, you, you you then of course um, were in the sugar cubes late, later on. But uh, for leaving the sugar cubes is it a hard thing to do? Um, no, I was very very uh, hungry. I guess I had had songs inside me for fifteen years. It was a very um, a delayed pregnancy, mm. I guess. So, but but I, I um, but I was I've, I've been working very very closely with mm. people like video uh, directors and, and, and uh, album designers mm -hmm. and engineers and producers and songwriters, all sorts of, I've been very lucky. Re I've worked with quite a lot of people, so mm -hmm. it's not like I've done all this on my own, really. Yes. When you came on this show, which was in uh, 1993, yeah. uh, I'll try and give you some things to help rem remember it. A uh, de-influencer on Lenny Kravitz, Gloria Estefan, do you remember that? Was that your first solo performance? After leaving on the television, after leaving there, I think so because I remember at that stage I hadn't even uh, formed a band. Mm. So I asked the influence if they would do it with me, mm. the song. So you you came, you offered me, and I didn't even have a band. You see, yeah, that's the kind of people we are. Yeah, you don't even have to have a band. <laughs> just come on, be yourself. <laughs> have you got a band with you today? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're gorgeous people. Yes. Yeah. You're right, they are. I've looked at them. I've, I've, I've observed them, being gorgeous. I've got Mark Bell is here and yeah. an eight-piece Icelandic string octet. They're all from Iceland. All thing. Iceland, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, um, now you're, well, I'd like to walk you over to your, uh, to your band now, where you're going to perform uh, some songs for us. The record is called uh, Homogenic. Why is that? Oh, it's like more one flavour than the ones before. More, lots of flavours, is that, is that what I mean? No, no, just one flavour. Right, I see. Single, solo, just like right, okay, Well, in that case, I'd like to invite you to settle in over there. Okay. And then. I shall keep the audience uh, busy over this way while you settle in. So, Björk's going over there, and um, when she's ready, uh, and she's settled in, primer's put to one side, entirely Icelandic string section, readied, tuned up. Please welcome Björk, ladies and gentlemen. 